We welcome the guests for the evening. I request everyone to please have a huge round of applause for the celebrity guest, Sonaski Sina. Aishwarya Rajni Khan Dhanush and our celebrity guest, Mr. Karan Johar. I request all the media person to please have a seat. We'll be getting a chance to have a media bite after the event. Request everyone to please get settled down. We have, the evening is for every one of you. Everyone will be getting a chance to have a media bite. Thank you so much. We request our celebrity guests to please have their seats. Hello, uh, a very warm welcome and a good evening to all of you. And I'm delighted on behalf of HarperCollins Publishers India and Crossword Bookstore to have all of you here in the presence of our author Ashwarya Rajnikan Dhanush and our guests uh, Karan Johar and Sonakshi Sena. Thank you so much Karan and Sonakshi for doing this and Ashwarya. It's a very special book. In fact, I'd like to start by asking any Anyone here, do they know, does anyone know what an Apple box is? Apple box, anyone? Gets a, gets a, gets a signed copy from Aishwarya for that. No. Yes, very, very, very logical. But, so, and that is the kind of book this is, you know. Uh, it's a very special book uh, coming from somebody who is Rajnikanth's daughter and Dhanush's wife. One would have expected a book full of uh, celebrity stories, but this is not that kind of a book. It's a book that is very understated, very keenly observant. As I've told Aishwarya in the previous function we had, there's a story in there about how she, at the end of the day, she comes back home and looks out of her window at a woman working in the garden and how she observes. It's a, in fact, I think Aishwarya, you should read that little, it's a short piece. You should read that piece as part of the evening because it's such a, 
it's such, it describes the book in such a good way. It's, it's just what the book is. It's what Ashwari's writing is. And I'm glad, I'm privileged to have published this book uh, on behalf of Harper Collins. I'd like to thank uh, Crossword Bookstores, uh, probably the biggest bookstore chain in India, 94 stores. And in an era where we keep complaining about people not reading books, this is evidence of what Crossword is doing in the decimation of the reading habit without taking any more time because this is what we are here for. I'd like to now invite Karan, Aishwarya and Sonakshi to sort of unveil the big one there. After this? Okay. Okay. In that case, uh, a proper unveiling of the small ones because we haven't opened, opened the book. You know? Thank you so much. And now I would uh, leave the evening to Karan Johar's most able hands and for a wonderful round of conversation with Sonakshi and Aishwarya, of course, the author of the book. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Firstly, I'd, of course, I'd like to uh, recap what the gentleman said. I'd like to thank Crossword for housing us. And it feels spectacular to walk into uh, to a room that smells of books. Uh, it's an essence and a smell that what doesn't come across very often these days. Uh, it's something that we grew up on. It's that feeling of opening a, a new book that, that is always exhilarating for anyone. Uh, that feeling seems to be diminishing, but the uh, more power to spaces like this, which empower books, and I hope will continue to do so. Um, to Harper Collins for inviting us and allowing us to actually speak about a book that is so immensely special. Um, it's a book that really touches on a topic that I don't think anyone ever has in our country. Uh, there is always so much said about being a celebrity, about being a star. So much is spoken about, written about, conjectured about, rumored about, and always speculated about. But the one essence that remains is there is always the light, the limelight, and there's always the focus on a humongous movie star. What one doesn't realize is that the family of that humongous movie star sometimes go through their own beats, emotionally, professionally, psychologically. And uh, while you think it's all very cushy and it's a land of luxury and a lap of luxury, there is also the flip side of that. There's a looming large shadow that is always hovering around the son or the daughter or the sibling or the spouse of a humongous movie star. Now, I'm privileged to share the platform of two wonderful and illustrious women, both of whose fathers have not only made a tremendous mark in the anvils of celluloid, but have also left behind impressions that they had to follow up to in various ways. Uh, Eshwarya touches upon what it feels like to be uh, the daughter or the child of such a talent and such a legend like her father, Mr. Rajnikanth. So Nakshi rightfully is in conversation with us, the daughter of prolific actor, politician, Shatrugan Sinha, who is not only known for his impactful personality, but also the tremendous work and legacy that he leaves behind. The two of them, as I've gathered, have been childhood friends, and of course have had many experiences together. Now, I have to begin with you, Ishvarya. When I read your book, and I first read about the concept, for everyone, who really wants to know what an apple box really is. An apple box is something that started off as being something that cased apples very efficiently. And then because we are Indian and we like to make maximum use of everything that is given to us, um, it became something that we used on set uh, for all short people to stand on. Uh, and especially, mostly, it was some of the, the, when the leading actors of those times were looming large and tall, and the wonderful leading ladies had to stand up for close-ups. 
Um, I saw it as a child. It was called the Apple Box. You stand on it uh, so that you can actually be in the same kind of line of vision for the cinematographer to capture you efficiently. Uh, I used it, I saw it so much as a child that I even made it a moment in Kabi Kushi Kabi Gum, where he actually draws that box and gives it to uh, Mrs. Bachchan for her to stand on. Um, what a wonderful observation, because uh, obviously Ashwarya has grown up on film sets and has probably seen that. And there's a chapter with the same name, Standing on an Apple Box. So rightfully, is that, was that the inspiration for the book title? Uh, hello, everyone. And first of all, I'd like to thank Crossword. And I'd like to uh, thank both these beautiful people for accepting to come. This is a given, because I've known her from the time she was a kid. But thank you so much for coming. And uh, it's so relevant with people who have parents who have been looming, looming personalities in their lives to come and talk about this. It didn't make sense otherwise at all to me. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And yes, standing on an apple box, the apple box, like you said, has, is like a comfort blanket. It's, it's something where I have uh, seen from the time I was born, then I was, while well, I was growing up, and then I got married into the same industry, and then I'm working in the same industry. So it's just something that I have seen all my life. And I wanted something very intriguing as a title. And I couldn't think of anything else, because I think the Apple Box has been one constant in my life all through, and it's still there. Then when days are crazy on the set, and you know you have so many people screaming and running about, and everything is going helter-skelter, all that you need to do is to go sit on that Apple Box and feel, OK, you know what? Something has been the same. That's not changed. So I think that's the apple box. And I'm sure she knows the apple box. He knows the apple box. And I wanted everyone to know that something so small can be so significant in our lives. Well, tell us, uh, Eshmaria, that the germ of this story obviously comes from something deeply personal within you. Obviously, you've had moments in your growing years and thereafter uh, where, of course, there's not a single day, I'm sure, that you've not been proud of your absolutely mag magnificent father's illustrious achievement. But there must have, been, must have been down days as well, you know, where you had to perhaps pay the price, the other side, the flip side of being a celebrity child. You know, sometimes where you're given perhaps too much attention, or sometimes perhaps where too much is expected of you. Uh, you know, where you're always burdened with the tag of being Rajni Khan's daughter. And that, that those can be experiences that you carry through school, through college, through your formative years, and then thereafter. Friends who perhaps befriend you for, uh, for all the right or wrong reasons. And there are relationships that crumble because there's always the fear of you know, expectation in those. So I'm sure that you and your sister, Sondaria, have had those down days as well. Does the book, is the book a result of those down days? Or is it a celebration of the up days? I think the book is, um, I would say, pages of my diary. Uh, if suppose reading out of my diary, how would it be? It's as real as that. And uh, definitely, there have been many days like that. It's not just one or two. And uh, I, this book, as you see that in the first page, I have dedicated it to all the celebrity kids that I know. And it's, it's very difficult to maintain the sanity and sensibility being coming from where we come from. It's uh, a lot of things are misconstrued. There are a lot of misconceptions. There are a lot of myths about you know, why we behave the way we do, why we talk the way we talk, why we don't make certain friends, why we make certain friends. So this talks about you know, that, you know what, we're also as normal as you are. And please don't think that we are abnormal. We are not. And there are a lot of things that we did exactly like how you did in childhood. And this talks about my memories of being normal. I think most of it is that. Wonderful. And Sunakshi, yeah, if I had to. Uh, speak to you. You've known Ishwarya uh, since uh, you all were child, children and you all were childhood friends. Now, if I had to say the same thing, that is there a deep resonance and a deep identification with the theme of this book in your life? You grew up again in the lap of Hindi cinema, in the lap of ev around film lights, people, fans, screaming fans outside your home, screaming on sets, always having a famous father. Now, that is very different from what other kids go through, you know, when their fathers step out into the real world, nobody's screaming for them, you know, and you've seen a totally different side. How did that impact you in your formative years? I think uh, full props to my parents for keeping everything as normal as they could. I feel everybody, uh, especially a, a star child or a celebrity child, 
craves for some kind of normalcy in their lives because they are always surrounded by so much chaos, like you said. So um, I feel it's very important for the parents to keep that balance. I mean, you have seen sides of, um, you know, our parents and uh, on through the media, through what you read, through what you see on TV, through what you see in films, which is always larger than life. So I think people kind of expect, oh, that to carry forward in real life as well. No, that is where real and real, uh, the difference between uh, real and real comes in. And honestly, uh, I don't know why people just think we've top code from some Asman or not. No, we haven't. <laughs> we are also very, very, our upbringings, uh, have, you know, try to be as normal as possible, I feel. and. Uh, I've had a lovely childhood, except for the parts where I was thrown into the limelight unexpectedly or given more attention that I craved for. Um, how old are you? 14. So at 14, like I, I think I had gone for some campaigning with my dad and everybody was treating me like I was some celebrity and asking for my autograph. And also when you're thrown into that at such a young age, you feel like, you know, oh my God, what have I you know, been pushed into? Uh, I don't want to be here. And um, that it does impact you in certain ways, but uh, it definitely depends on the parents to keep it as normal as possible for the children. And I'm really happy that she's written this book, uh, which gives our perspective out there so that you can know how we also feel. And, um, you know, yeah. I'm, I have to pipe you. in here and say that my first award that I ever won for my first film, Kuch Kuch Hota, was given to me on stage by Sonakshi, yeah. who was baby Sonakshi then. Yeah, which and my I was dad like, again. I was like, like dude, this is really hysterical. <laughs> like like a 12-year-old is giving me my first film. So there are perks. Perks, uh, yeah, and, but hello. And if you go online, there's a whole YouTube video where I look like a house, because that's what I look like at that time. And Sonakshi is bespectacled and, and has spoken in Shudhin and said other near something and yeah. something and I was Which like my dad has taught me full yeah. tuition is given me so, before going up so on there stage. are some fun perks as yeah. well of but no I'm sitting next to him and I'm like watching this award function like any one of us would be like really excited to be at an award show for the first time if you're not directly yeah. into it yeah. I mean I came from school home and my dad was like chalo award function mein jate hai. and then I went and I sat and he said chalo award dena hai stage pe. and I'm like ye 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 bolna so I was like yeah okay no but you see what happens you know with with even there is there is always this now I've grown up now my father was a film producer which didn't qualify as being a movie star at all you know producers are always at the lowest rung of like everything all we are expected to is be really nice to movie stars all the time so all my father used to tell me is that if I say ye mera beta I have to bend down and touch their feet so that was all I was told to do it was like that but it's but at, from from an outside perspective, I've grown up with uh, Abhishek and Shweta, who are Mr. Bachchan's children, uh, Javits and uh, Hani, uh, Javits Ab and and Hani Rani's kids, uh, Zoya and Farhan. All of them. At Abhishek used to have this big birthday bash, um, Shweta and Abhishek together, and everyone celebrity kids would turn up, and that's where you realize that everyone actually has such a normal, organic upbringing. I've seen Mr. Bachchan dance on that dance floor, you know, with all the kids and hand out prizes. And I've seen his kids never win, you know, uh, because he was always perhaps looking at the flip side of it, you know. And so there is, there is so much normalcy, but the world outside, outside that house, there were like 2,000 people screaming. So it's like a dichotomy, right? Ishwarya, that while you're in the confines of your home, you have so much stability, like Sonakshi expressed, so much normalcy. But the moment you step out and you see, like in your father's case, I don't think any movie star in this country has seen, there are temples built on his name. People die and fall flat on floors, like when he walks. That is not normal. To be his daughter cannot be normal. And for you to kind of maintain your stability and look as poised as you are, I mean, kudos to you. And I'm sure the book also taps into those experiences. Like, your abnormality is on another level. What do you have to say? No, I think it's, uh, it's been quite the opposite in our case. Because um, here, you know, there was, a, like up in the north, uh, here when all the parents thought that they should send their kids abroad to keep them away from this whole uh, din and the whole uh, craziness, my parents opted to keep us in the same city, but secluded. It was very different. It was, uh, they wanted to keep us there. They didn't want to send us, but at the same time, they did not want this whole thing to, you know, kind of taint our way of looking at ourselves. So it was a very different childhood, and it was a very uh, closed and a very uh, safeguarded childhood that we had. And it was not, our pictures were never uh, shown anywhere outside, you know. There was, there's even a, 
a chapter in the book about it. Like, you know, so many people had so many assumptions why. People thought that we were not normal, there was something wrong, or we had, we were deaf, or we were blind, that's why they didn't want to show us out in the media. So they had their own assumptions about us because they were very closed about not letting us be seen anywhere outside. So I think that my mom did that for a reason because, you know, we used to go to the beach with our relatives, with an aunt or with a friend. No one, no one used to see us, no one used to stare at us. So she maybe thought at some level that that normalcy can be given only when they are not around. So I think it was... So you've never watched your father's film in one of those crazy movie hall experiences where when, as soon as your father comes on screen, people would stand up and start dancing and coming and garlanding his poster and doing all that. You've never seen any of that up close and personal? It was much, much, much later in my life. Much later. Yes, it was never when I was a kid because we used to only be taken for preview shows. It was never premiere shows. Okay. And uh, all the other movies that we were allowed to watch were only black and white films okay. and uh, old English classics. Oh so dear. yeah. Okay. So my my mom ran quite a tight show at home, so it was pretty. What strict. about what about the flip side of that as well? The overprotection. Yes, uh, I think. Does that also come into your core personality today? Do you think you somewhere also have to pay the price of being overtly sheltered? Yes, I think it's not. I think it it's not healthy, definitely. And uh, I don't blame my mother for doing it, doing yes. what she did at that point, because you know uh, maybe that was the only way she knew how to do it and you can't really blame her because my father was mostly not around he was doing seven films a year so he was pretty much working throughout the year he was never at home so maybe at some level she thought she was responsible and answerable to him if something went wrong so i think that was the reason why she did it and when i'm gro i'm bringing up kids today i have two sons and i know that i can see pretty much 60 percent of my mom uh, in me when I'm bringing them up. Because again, your husband is a movie star. Yes, and, and it's like history repeating itself. Yes, so it's it's pretty, uh, we, we tend to become overprotective by default. And the other thing common uh, about uh, celebrity children is the mother factor, the mere pas mahe factor. Um, I interviewed Jackie Shroff uh, for my talk show. He came on with Tiger. And Tiger said exactly what you said, and I'm sure Shunak, Sunakshi will have the similar thing to say. He said, Dad was not at home a lot because he was filming right through. So there was high dependency, emotionally and otherwise, on the mother. Uh, is that the same, Sunakshi, for you? Like, uh, was there a, is absolutely. the mother a, a more of an influence because of your circumstance? Absolutely. I think because she was the one person who was always around. Uh, even though we knew that, you know, dad has this pr job to do and he's traveling all over and uh, he's doing it for us. Um, she was the one that was constant and always there. So I guess that is natural for us to fall back on the mother more than the father. But obviously, um, to compensate for their not being there, I, I read something from the book as well that we would, we would, they would overcompensate by bringing us so many presents and dolls and gifts and um, you know all of that so I and also I remember something very vaguely I think the first time when I went to Chennai uh, I had gone to their house and I remember like very I was very young vaguely I remember your mum was teaching a group of uh, kids at home and I found that so serene I found that like to be like almost like a gurukul and I found I thought to myself that you know wow it's so nice to be in an environment like that where you're just uh, you just left to be by yourself and learn at home and uh, I would have thought they were weird she's being nice no 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 it's honestly not. I, I remember even I asking my mom about it yes. I was like how yes. come they're all learning at home I, even I don't want to go to school can you teach me at home <laughs> Look, normal cannot be the thing you can nothing is normal yeah. You must understand what we're touching upon with this yeah. book and otherwise. Yeah. Like while you say that you had normal upbringings, yeah. but the fact that there's overprotection is not yeah. normal. I, I remember when my dad became a minister for the first time. Um, they obviously have Z security and I was in the sixth, fifth or sixth or seventh, I can't remember even, uh, standard. And they used to send these security guys with like these big guns and all with me as guards to school. And I had to put my foot down. It felt so weird. I had to tell my mom, I will not go to school if these men get out of the car before me and escort me to the gate. I will not. It's just embarrassing. So I had to like make that stop on my own because it's just so strange. Like everybody, even if you don't want to draw attention, no, they will look at you because of that. In so, good yeah. humor, I have to add that 
their mother did that. My mother went a step ahead and started her own school. She said, I don't want to send you anywhere. You studied my school. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I think well, that, you're better off, trust me. <laughs> but there's also the other thing that one does touch upon is that everybody else uh, whose parents do jobs that are not in media focus or in cele celebrity light um, don't necessarily know, like I don't know of somebody else's father who's a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, how they're doing in their professional status. This is one fraternity and industry where global success is talked about all over, and so is failure. Yeah. And there is a ramification of that as well. Yeah. So when your fathers or your mothers fail uh, in the movies, they're also spoken about at length. Uh, Sonakshi, did you feel that, that sometimes that, that information of failure brought down the energy in the house? Or was you, were you also protected by that? I think we were definitely protected by that. And also, it was not as much as it is today. Today, we have the, the press, the media, social yeah, media. Today, so they're hammering it in your head it's, if something yeah, doesn't work. If right? even you sneeze and everybody knows you've sneezed. Yeah. So at that point of time, it wasn't so extreme. So I think that information to reach us also would be filtered out by the time it reached us. It was very like PG-13 types, like, OK, beta, this is what has happened and all. And you could tell by the mood of the parent, like mother, father, that something home. was a bit yeah. amiss, but, yeah, but that it was Yeah, something is a bit amiss, but it'll be fine. It'll be OK. And that was what we would always be assured of, because having been in the industry for, for so long, they knew of the ups and downs. You yeah. know, what, what goes down has to come up. Come up. And, and vice versa. Yeah, and vice versa. So, and um, and Eshwarya, the same with you? Was failure uh, also kept away from you whenever there was? I think yes. Though in your extent. father's trajectory, I'm trying to figure out when that zone was. <laughs> Very few moments of those. Yes, I think, uh, you know, when there are fewer moments of such, they kind of make a bigger impact. When you don't get to see so much of it. And by God's grace, thankfully, yes, it's more exaggerated. It feels more out of the normal. So it, it kind of, you can feel the whole grimness in the, at home. You can feel it. Like she said, there would be a kind of uh, odd silence. There would be things that people would rather not talk about. They would not want to say anything about. And then, you know, just give, the only thing my mother used to say on days like that is just give space. It's, it's just not, it's better not to talk about things. It's better to give space. And I remember as a child when I was around a group of lots of star kids, um, I was of course always, no doubt I have a talk show, because I was always obsessed by reading uh, gossip tabloids. Uh, Stardust and Cineblitz were always were magazines that I had access to. I remember that none of the other star kids even knew they existed. So obviously, it was kept away very diligently, yeah. whereas my mother was not doing the same. I was growing up, on, I was obsessed by the stardust. And for me, that was the gospel truth. What was written in those newspapers, those, those magazines, was I thought was definitely the reality, you know? Um, it was, did that apply to both of you as well? Like, was all information beyond yes. kept uh, away? There were no magazines for at home, whether Tamil or Filmfare or Stardust at that point. I mean, it was not done and a lot of channels were not floating sure. around yes not, <laughs> not there yeah i think even if there were like very rarely there would be um they or they were just kept away from us or by chance if we happened to find one somewhere two three pages would be torn out from it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we don't know what was missing but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I get that because I've grown up around so many star kids. Yeah. It's amazing that actually, Eshwarya, you've written this book because I'm sure not just children of famous parents, but in two ways I think it's magnificent. One, because I think anyone who has been in this situation is going to deeply identify with the ethos of the book. And those who are not would get a mirror into the real truth behind what other people perceive to be as an exceptionally cushy existence. Uh, there are so many, as I said, deep dark days. There's so many, um, there's so many aspects that children and, as I said, spouses, siblings have to combat. And, uh, and the fact that you've kept it breezy and light and yet somewhere so soulful without pretending for it to be, I have to say as a debut author, Big kudos to you. Thank you so and, much. Um, and I feel your dad will be so proud 
with event the eventuality of this book. And I see so many interesting things happening with uh, with Star Children. When I see Shweta being an emerging columnist, besides, of course, the movie star children who are already doing so well, like Sunakshi, but even the ones who did not enter the film fraternity. And I see you, and I see even Twinkle now emerging, you know, on her own. There is so much interesting. I think that everyone's finding their mojo, perhaps a little later, but definitely it's a buildup of so much within them. Yeah, I think uh, we're all c trying to, you know, kind of find where we belong. Right. And uh, for some, it takes very little time. For some, it takes a whole, whole years to, you know, find out where we belong, you know, because we can't just, um, I think anyone who does anything just because they need to do it will never work. You need right. to actually feel and be comfortable, comfortable in your skin and, you know, you need to feel good about uh, doing what you're doing. Right. You know, when I make a, when I'm in a film set, I always tell everyone it's like fish in water. It's just you feel so at home. You feel like you're at home because everyone there has either seen you grow up or they've, they're working with you or they've grown up with you. Or it's just that everyone's so familiar. It's not alienated. because right. I don't think we could do anything else. It's just that someday you will, you will land up here, but in maybe different fields and aspects of it. But you can't right. see yourself away from it at all. Well, huge congratulations. And thank you, and thank thank you, you so for, much. for being the author of this book and thank you for bringing it to the world. And thank you, Sunash, Sunakshi, for your tremendous insight on the same. And uh, I think we should now officially... Would you like to read the bit the gentleman was talking about? No, I think the book is pretty thin by itself. So I okay. just let people read it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, these wonderful ladies um, who are with me on stage will now, I think, officially tear open yes. this beautiful piece and a gem of a book. Uh, on behalf of uh, Crossword Bookstores, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Nitin Pandey, Head of Operations, who will give away a token of appreciation for the guests here. Hi, on behalf of... For Sonakshi and Aishwarya for sharing with us the insights of, of how is it to be a real celebrity child and Karan for... Uh, hosting the event and uh, uh, making them uh, share their insights with us. Thank you so much on behalf of Crossword. Thank you. The books.